Hello, uh, I'm Mohamed Mahbouf and I work at the National CERT of Qatar. And today I wish to share with you a journey that we took in, uh, as a team in learning uh, Rust and Rustifying our data processing pipeline. So this is a Rustation's approach to uh, uh, real-time stream processing. And this work is done in collaboration with one of my colleagues, uh, also another Mohamed, Mohamed Samir at QCERT. And uh, before uh, we dive into the uh, details of this journey of how we uh, learned to rustify our data uh, processing pipeline, uh, I want to give uh, some background on what we use the, uh, the real-time stream processing for uh, and to give some history and context about why we use that. So uh, at first I will be rambling about some relevant and irrelevant history to why we use uh, real-time streaming. Why do we need real-time streaming? And our first uh, attempt at doing uh, real-time stream processing using uh, Apache Storm. And uh, why we came to write uh, antimony. And uh, I will give some code example. And it, in the end I will... Uh, <coughs> Uh, I will explain why the name. Okay. So uh, we do uh, uh, real-time DNS log analysis at, uh, for uh, multiple government organizations for over 100 uh, uh, government entities that uh, vary greatly in their maturity level. Some of them are a, entities that are small offices with a handful of nodes. Others are mega corporations that have 10,000 nodes uh, and above. And we process around 10 terabytes of data of DNS logs every day. Uh, and uh, we, we are mostly interested in DNS logs, not the entire uh, network stream, because uh, the DNS log itself contains a lot of uh, interesting information that you can use to infer a lot of uh, activity that is going on into the network. So if you take a look at a, a sample DNS log entry, uh, it contains a lot of interesting stuff that you could use to infer what is going on inside a particular network. So it has stuff like the timestamp, a client, the status of the request, and it also has the fully qualified domain name that someone was trying to resolve in, in DNS. And I will not dive into all the patterns that you can infer from such data, but I will focus only on one uh, simple example that relies solely on the uh, FQDN only. So if we consider just, uh, if you uh, look at these logs and you only look at the FQDN uh, and you just consider that you could, uh, you have a way to separate certain uh, uh, FQDNs based on some rules, uh, you could uh, find very interesting stuff in the logs. So for instance, if you, you can weed out or uh, separate uh, uh, the FQDNs that contain certain keywords, you could catch and uh, detect very advanced malware, stuff that could be, that was used by the Carbonac cyber gang who allegedly stole around 500 million to $1 billion. And their APT malware was simply communicating with domains like this uh, that contain certain keywords like update-java and adobe-update and system SV. So I wouldn't advise you visit these websites. Yeah. <laughs> But if you can look at the logs and you detect these uh, certain keywords and you separate that and have an analyst look at it, you could stop a, a really a big damage that could be in, in certain networks from targeted attacks. Uh, other stuff that you could look about is uh, FQDNs that are ridiculously long for human beings to remember. So if you set a rule to find uh, FQDNs that are quite long, uh, you can find a lot of domain-generated uh, FQDNs that are generated by a domain generation algorithm, and that's commonly used by uh, malware uh, writers. And there's this paper uh, that did a large-scale uh, malware analysis of, of uh, a huge amount of malware, and DNS is one of the favorite uh, channels that uh, malware writers use to do uh, command and control and also to exfiltrate data through the DNS. So uh, as it's a great tool for the attackers, it's also a great tool for defenders if you want to uh, have a kill zone to uh, stop this traffic. If you do the DNS log analysis, uh, you can infer a lot of things that's going on in a network and you can stop a lot of uh, uh, malicious activities within the network. So we uh, decided as a team, uh, we were two programmers and uh, three or four analysts when we started, 
uh, to write a, uh, a, a real-time stream processing uh, data pipeline to ingest all this data that comes at various speeds and do some uh, analysis. And we, we, uh, we were coming from different programming backgrounds and we all agreed that Python is a good middle ground for everyone, for the programmers and the analysts. And we wanted to use Apache Storm because we thought that's a good fit. And we came across something called Pileus from Yelp uh, that allows you to write uh, stream processing uh, uh, real-time jobs in, in Python and you don't have to fiddle around with anything related to JVM. And so that, that was a good choice for everyone, programmers and the analysts. So uh, Storm was open sourced by Twitter, uh, written by Nathan Mars in 2011, and we built our entire uh, DNS log analysis pipeline on top of uh, Apache Storm using a Python. Uh, and a, what is the essence of a, a real-time a real streaming job? It's basically a MapReduce-like uh, of a job, but where the input is a, a continuously incoming stream of data tuples that never ends. So it's a, a, an ever-going uh, process that continually running. And you can represent this uh, computation in the form of a directed acyclic graph that uh, the stream of data is incoming and you want to uh, direct the stream into a series of, of computations without having to worry about how to do the whole uh, distribution of this. You don't have to write uh, uh, complex uh, networking uh, layer stuff. So Storm is great for that. And uh, the, this directed acyclic graph in the terminology of uh, Apache Storm, it's called a topology. And it contains uh, nodes of two kinds. One kind is called the uh, spout, and the spout is a source of data. It's a, a node that is reading data in a continuous fashion. So it could be reading data from a queue like Kafka or NSQ, or even grabbing data from network or from a MySQL database. And we have a bolt. Bolt is a, the, the node that is actually doing the computation. So if you're computing some value, you're performing some arbitrary function or joins or these type of operations, you, you write this in the form of, of a bolt. And so if we consider a very simple uh, topology, linear topology like that, that have a spout that is a log entry spout that is grabbing the log entries from somewhere, from a queue or from a network service, and it is uh, forwarding this uh, incoming data tuple uh, to the extract FQDN bolt to extract the FQDN out of the, uh, uh, the log entry, and then it passes on to uh, count how many occurrences of this uh, FQDN uh, has appeared in the entire stream over a certain period of time or in general. And this is a... Uh, uh, the directed acyclic graph that uh, it's called a topology in, 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 in Storm's uh, terminology. And it's also known as the logical plan. You, you simply represent your computation in the form of a topology and you submit it to Storm and Storm will handle how to distribute that over a set of, 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 uh, of nodes, a cluster of nodes. And uh, for, so in this example, uh, if you have uh, this topology, uh, you, you want the log to come in and you want to parse, so you don't care which particular uh, bolt is going to parse, they're all equal, you're just extracting the FQDN, so you can shuffle group any, you have multiple instances of the spout and it pushes this uh, tuple of data into uh, an extraction uh, bolt that will extract the FQDN out of the log. And then uh, when you are passing it onto the count FQDN, you care where this exact FQDN go to which exact uh, bolt to maintain the count. So you can uh, filter by the field of outgoing uh, stream. <coughs> so what is the motivation to rewrite the entire uh, uh, data stream processing? Well, first we needed an excuse to write more Rust. So. Uh, and we thought that uh, the way we were running uh, Storm was in the most efficient way because we are using Pileus, which takes the entire Python interpreter, put it inside of a jar, and then take this jar and distribute all that onto the nodes. So it didn't seem a very efficient way to do it. And we thought that if we re rewrite the, uh, the st uh, streaming engine in, uh, uh, in Rust, we might gain uh, some performance out of that. 
So this is uh, how Storm does this uh, uh, distribution. You submit a topology in the form of a jar to a master node called Nimbus, and the Nimbus is responsible for transforming your logical topology plan into a physical plan, and how to distribute that on a bunch of uh, cluster nodes, a cluster of nodes. And uh, th there are slave nodes that contain a process called a supervisor and uh, has a bunch of storm workers that will actually do the, uh, the, the job of your, uh, of your topology. And uh, this had uh, some s serious uh, problems. Uh, was it first uh, the Nimbus as, as a, the master node is very overloaded. Is a, uh, a, it's responsible for scheduling, for uh, uh, coordination and monitoring, and it is not resource aware. So if you ask the Nimbus to uh, make 400 instances of a certain process, it will just do that, regardless of the resources that are available in your uh, cluster. So it's not resource aware. And uh, it, uh, it's also a single point of failure. So if, you f if the Nimbus node fails, your entire uh, cluster of storm, all the topologies that were running there are gone. Uh, another thing with, the, uh, with storm is that it has a quite of a complex uh, execution uh, uh, model where it, uh, the storm worker itself is just a JVM uh, process and it Inside the JVM process, it have multiple executors, which are essentially a, a pair of threads. And these pair of threads are responsible for taking your task, your code logic that, that you want to execute, to execute them within the JVM process. So there is a, a, a multiple, you are doing scheduling at multiple layers, and the multiplex, multiplexing of this scheduling is quite uh, difficult to reason about and very hard to debug a task that is uh, uh, that is scheduled with, with this multiple layers of multiplexing. So, inside of a storm, uh, uh, a storm worker, uh, the, this is a JVM process, and it has two main two threads per worker. Uh, one is called the worker receive uh, thread, and the other is called the worker send thread. And they pick up data, to data tuples from the from the network and uh, uh, pass it on to the. Uh, to the executor that is uh, containing your code logic. And within this ex uh, executor, you have two, two threads. Uh, one is called the user uh, logic uh, thread that contains the code that you want to perform. And the other is the send thread that is responsible for sending out the data tuple after it's being processed. And it uses uh, something called the LMAX disruptor queues inside of this process to queue this data tuples. And this is quite a little bit too much to, uh, if you want to debug something that is running in this form, uh, and you also wrote that in, in, the, in the form of a Python interpreter and a Python script inside of a jar, it's kind of messy to debug. If you, when you have a, a storm cluster and it fails, it's, it's very difficult to know where to even start with that. And another problem that we started to, uh, to face also is the larger the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, the storm cluster we have, the more overloaded Zookeeper started to become. And uh, it, it became very difficult to debug because uh, storm uses Zookeeper for heartbeats to, to uh, maintain the, f the state of the, of the, of the stream. Uh, uh, and, and that led to be, uh, the Zookeeper to becoming overloaded. And if you're using uh, a single Zookeeper cluster for other services as well, it becomes a big mess to, uh, to debug that. So uh, some homegrown wisdom that started to occur in our uh, team is that if you want to write a topology, just simply separate, write, uh, deploy a cluster of storm workers and keep each topology at a, a separate cluster of storm which is a very terrible idea. And uh, you end up uh, over-provisioning for everything. And then two things happened. Uh, we thought maybe we can rewrite uh, Apache Storm or find a better alternative. And at that time, Twitter published a, uh, a research paper called Twitter Heron. And uh, we, we saw that uh, from the error messages that we were getting from Storm, we learned that uh, Storm is using Nitty for uh, async uh, networking, for asynchronous networking. 
And at the time, uh, we watched the Mayo talk in uh, uh, Rust Camp, the first Rust Camp, and we thought, well, if uh, Rust have asynchronous networking, maybe we could rewrite a stream processing uh, engine in Rust. So this is the paper that uh, Twitter published, Heron, which addresses all the problems that Storm has. And we thought we will use this as a guiding principle into designing our system. So first of all, uh, Heron uh, does not have a master node. It doesn't use Nimbus. It doesn't have a, a master node that is responsible for scheduling. It uses existing uh, schedulers, stuff like Apache uh, Mises, or Marathon, or Aurora. And uh, each, you submit your topology to the scheduler, and each topology have its own uh, uh, topology master. <coughs> So uh, the topology master is a, com is a component inherent that is responsible for translating your logical uh, topology plan into your uh, physical plan, and also is responsible for maintaining the state. And is not, uh, it, it does not handle uh, heartbeats or maintaining the, uh, the flow of the data. There's a separate process for that called the stream manager. And the unit of abstraction for, for execution here is, uh, is a container, not a JVM process. So it's much easier to deploy on, uh, on a larger uh, scale network. So uh, Zookeeper is the one that, the, uh, sorry, the topology master is the, uh, pro the component that is responsible for communicating with the uh, existing scheduler that is resource aware. So it relies on Aurora or uh, Marathon to uh, d uh, to allocate resources to your topology. And the stream manager is the process that is responsible for the routing of the tuples and also applies uh, back pressure. So if we take uh, an example here, again, our same topology that does the extraction. Uh, uh, and when you uh, deploy that, it becomes... Uh, uh, the physical plan, uh, when you deploy the uh, topology, the linear topology, uh, it turns into uh, the physical plan that actually uh, distributes your code on multiple uh, 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 containers. And each container will contain something called the stream manager. And the stream managers of all the containers in your topology will form a fully connected network. So it will connect uh, all, all of your uh, uh, containers with, uh, if, if the, the routing requires to go cross containers, there's a TCP stream between the two containers. And if it's uh, within, the, uh, communication needs to happen between two uh, instances or two processes inside of the same container, it was the result to uh, Unix domain sockets. And so uh, we, the, the whole purpose of writing this was that we wanted to move away from our inefficient Python uh, uh, implementation on top of Storm. And we wanted to write that in, in Rust. So uh, in Antimony, you can uh, d define a topology in the form of a JSON file that explains the, uh, the components and how it flows, how the data flows from one component to the other in the form of a JSON file. And you implement your code logic of the spouts and the bolts that you want in, in the following uh, folder structure like that. And uh, you simply uh, implement the spout on the, the components, and uh, you can write the code in Rust. So uh, you can have a, a, a spout, and you simply, uh, this is a sample spout that just emits uh, continuous emission of, of uh, log entries. And uh, the uh, bolt would do the actual uh, an, uh, per computation on the emitted uh, uh, on the emitted uh, tuple. And then there is a CLI tool which you run inside of your uh, uh, topology that would submit this to the topology master and would communicate with the. Uh, 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 scheduler to schedule, uh, uh, to allocate resources for your, uh, the components of your topology. Uh, and so, regarding the, the name, uh, we uh, wanted to name the project uh, some uh, metallic kind of name because it seems that if you go to crates.io and you try to find the rust uh, crates, you will find that most of them are metals, and you'll notice that all the metals in the periodic table are already taken on, on crates.io. <laughs> so, 
We, I mean, there is iron, cobalt, nickel, titanium, aluminium, even stuff that cannot really rust, like cobalt doesn't really, it's a super alloy. Uh, nickel also doesn't rust. So anyways, we, we couldn't, we, we had to settle on something that is close enough, so we picked uh, metalloid, uh, and antimony is kind of uh, 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 sort of a semi-metal type of thing, and so we thought, okay, not, not close enough, and that's how it looks like in, in, in reality. <laughs> And uh, the other fact is that ancient Egyptians used to use this as a mascara, so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions? We have time for one hour. Okay. Do you want to scream? Uh, the the, th the throughput is uh, about two to three times better than our uh, Apache Storm, but what we really uh, made progress on is the resource allocation because our way of running uh, Storm was uh, to do KVM virtualization for building the clusters and to move away to something that is using mesos. We saved over 10x in resource uh, usage. So, uh, because, because well, we started with a, not a very wise way of, of deploying uh, Storm, so. so basically, you uh, run, run two to three times faster on ten less servers. Yes. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you.